who has a uh, YouTube channel with uh, more than a half million followers. This became very controversial in the last week or so. This group of YouTubers uh, has been on an RV trip. And on this trip, there was uh, some video taken on the, uh, the cameras there on one of the RVs that some people believe constitutes inappropriate sexual contact between Blade and a woman who goes by the name Gucci. Now, it gets a little complicated and it's a little murky because there's another fellow who's with Blade named Bjorn, and he apparently goes to the back of the RV. If you look at the video, I'm sure you have. There's the potential of a, some sort of interaction there. He comes back, and then you see Blade say, hey, something to the effect of, I uh, think I should go back, or should I go back, or can I go back, or I'm going to go back and have uh, sex with, uh, with Gucci. Uh, he walks back. Uh, it's not clear exactly what happens, but there's a scene where he's under the covers with her. He comes out. His shorts are off, but he says he's cold. Um, and this has raised a lot of conversation on YouTube, on the Internet in general, people accusing Blade of, of uh, sexual misconduct uh, in this and another case where he apparently groped a woman uh, during one of his uh, live streams. Uh, there's been an allegation that he was cruel to a dog in one of his live streams. You've probably seen that. And um, with us tonight, without any further introduction needed, is Blade himself, who uh, is joining me live here on Hanson versus Predators. Blade, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Well, thanks for being here tonight. I appreciate um, so it. Um, you know the, the controversy, day, and, and I don't have to say much more about it. Uh, what's your side of the story here? What happened in that? Um, so we had been streaming all day. We had picked up Gucci's, or she had met us in... I believe San Francisco. Right. Um, we went out to bars. I had a couple drinks. Um, truth be told, I, I am a drinker. I'm actually, unfortunately, known on the internet for getting really, really drunk for donations, for views, or whatever, and, and sometimes doing things, stupid things, when I'm in a drunk stupor. Um, but this day, I really didn't drink that much because Gucci's was performing karaoke. She was being pretty ridiculous. She was really, really, really drunk. I think it was nervousness. Um, we went back on the RV, and while we were back on the RV, she was really sexually aggressive towards everyone on the RV. Uh, my friend Bone Clinks, uh, my friend Bjorn. Uh, she was really into Bjorn, and there's actually clips of her basically like constantly jumping on top of Bjorn right. and trying to like make out with him and stuff like that. Uh, she tried to pull me into the, the RV's bathroom for, I don't know what she was trying to do, but I was, really wasn't trying to be back in the bathroom with her, especially on stream, and I wasn't really wasn't interested in her. Um, and so she finally went to the back with Bjorn. Um, I don't know what exactly happened there. Uh, both of them had been drinking pretty heavily. But then Bjorn came back up to the front. We were up there for a while. And then as a joke, all I want to do was get some sleep. That's a big bed. If you face from the RV, looking at the bed, Gucci's is on the left in a blanket. Just tired. All I want to do was get some sleep. That's a big bed. If you face from the RV, looking at the bed, Gucci's is on the left in a blanket. I gather a blanket and I proceed to go to sleep or at least attempt to go to sleep. Did well, you did you sexually assault or inappropriately touch Gucci's Jessica? Ab absolutely not. Absolutely not. I did not touch her in that bed at all. Now, when you are at the uh, helm there in the RV, you say, I'm going to, after you talk about having sex with Gucci's, whether you're joking mm. or not, you say, I'm going to go pee. Almost mm. like you're making an excuse to go back there and do what you said you were going to do. How do you explain that? I mean, honestly, I had, I had to urinate before I went to, went, went to go sleep. That's honestly what that is. If you watch the tape, you see me go into the bathroom for like probably less than 30 seconds and then come out and then I go back to the bed to sleep. Now, as I'm doing this, obviously, uh, Bjorn, who I believe it was my chat that he had, he had my little selfie stick set up with the phone and everything. The chat's like, go back and check. And then when he goes back and checks on me, I'm literally attempting to sleep. I think my I was back to back with Gucci's. There's, there's video and clips of that. 
and I literally was just trying to sleep. And then um, I came out because like I could hear Bjorn talking about he's not doing anything wrong. And I think I went to go talk to him, but then I went back and tried to go back to sleep. Um, there is this one clip where there's three windows and in the middle window is just air blowing in. And so stuff's flying around. Um, I tried to cover Gucci's with a blanket at one point and tried to get back to sleep. Um, and then I believe Bjorn tried to put the camera in there. And I don't think that watching a man sleep is really is interesting. I'm a heavy sleeper when I finally do get to sleep. So um, oftentimes when, when, when us as streamers do what's called sleep streams, um, it's literally an attempt to, to bait donations that will play over the speaker to try to wake us up or irritate us. But I'm a heavy sleeper. So I finally said, we've been streaming for like 12 hours a day. I turned off the stream and went to sleep. Now, there are some people who've watched this video who believe that it shows you on top of Jessica moving uh, uh, around in, in a sexual manner. How do you no. respond to that? I, I didn't do anything like that. The only time that I got above her was to put a, a blanket over here cause, over her because it was freezing and then went back to try to get in a position to sleep. Now, other people question, you know, true YouTubers who have gone over this video over and over and over again, why you were complaining at one point of being cold, yet you walk out of that back room without your shorts on. How do you explain that? Um, so oftentimes, like when people, especially with the RV cams and, and the 24 seven cams, a lot of times when I drink in excess, which I didn't do this night, but a lot of times when I drink in excess, I just fall where I fall, sleep on the ground, sleep on a sofa with full clothes. But when I actually like prepare to go to bed, um, I don't like sleeping with a belt around my shorts and all that other stuff. So I usually take my pants off and take my shirt off and just sleep in my underwear. So um, that's what I was doing. I was trying to fucking cover up, even though we were in a hot state, we were driving at night and the wind blowing, I was freezing, but I don't really sleep in my clothes when I try to sleep comfortably. Now, uh, a couple days goes by, um, mm -hmm. actually, let me back up. You were in Reno, Nevada at this point in the beginning of this. this I, whole I, be I believe it. I, I could be wrong, but I believe this so-called incident, um, happened in, San Francisco in San Francisco. Okay. Now the account that I've read is that somebody was concerned about it and reported it to police. There really wasn't much activity at the time, but later when the whole caravan got to Colorado, there was some police intervention. Uh, Jessica I believe, went to, I, went to I, the police and complained that she felt that she had been, uh, touched or sexually assaulted by you. This is after she apparently looked at some of the videos and was, was uh, involved in some conversations with other people in the caravan. Uh -huh. Why did she go to police and say that she was inappropriately touched or sexually assaulted by you? Um, so she was in contact with, um, I don't know if, if your community knows what doxers or swatters are. Um, she was in constant contact before this RV trip happened with um with members of teams that literally want to ruin irl streamers lives they call the police on people they get they get they call up shops that we visit to say that we're being inappropriate <laughs> smearing poop on stuff yelling at people um so when this non-incident happened and the next day i talked to her about it everything was fine we, we had a conversation off stream and um, what did she, she say to you in person about this she she said she asked me what you know what's going on why are people saying this stuff and i go they're trying to ruin my life and i go did you i asked her did you feel like i inappropriately touched you do you feel like you got like i hate to use the word but raped and she no, was like no i don't feel anything to... like that i just went to sleep so after that we had an entire day of streaming um i believe by then we were in um salt lake city and um, we streamed for probably 10 plus hours that day in Salt Lake City. But during this time, she's actually in her uh, on her phone talking to in a discord, talking to known swatters that have actively for past year have been trying to ruin my life by doing calls, uh, putting Craigslist ads out. So that people constantly come to my door, just basically full on harassment towards me. And so 
she's a little, um, I don't want to use the word gullible, but she's very impressionable. So even though she was assured by Bjorn and myself that nothing happened, these other people were making stuff up and, and in her ear. And she also got intoxicated another night. And she admitted that, um, unfor- like I asked her, I was like, you know, were you raped? Were you touched? And she was like, yeah, I was raped by my father. And I was like, I'm sorry, that's horrific, that's horrible. Um, and then fast forward to when we were in Colorado, we all did a bunch of mushrooms. She didn't do mushrooms, but my entire crew did. We thought that'd be interesting. Um, I had a bad mushroom trip. And then as we were leaving to get back on the RV, um, I basically just not passed out, but I basically just like laid in the stars and had like life epiphanies and whatever. And so when it was just uh, Gucci's and the other members of the RV on the RV, um, that's when she talked to my boy Bam and Bjorn and um, Bone Clinks and said, you know what? I got all these people. I-, I don't know what happened, but I got all these people talking to my ears saying that I was sex- either sexually assaulted or raped. Let's go to the police. So Bone Clinks, like any person that would be in a position, um, believed her and took her to the police and they filled out a police report. Um, I was in a hotel room for a couple days. Um, I thought that I got ditched off the RV because I was kind of a dickhead on the mushroom trip and this whole rape allegation, it was just bad news. I thought that maybe I'd just go home. I didn't know if I was going to get back on the RV or not. Um, They, uh, Bone took Gucci's to the police department and they filed the report and they also took my clothing and this in the bedding and you know took that as evidence and then they're going to test that um while i found out about this while i was in the hotel um i felt the need to clear my name so without a lawyer i went i found out from bam the police department that they went to i went there in which police department was this blade unfortunately i don't remember the name of it um i could probably find out rather outside, outside of denver no it was in denver in denver it was in denver yes um, what did you tell the police in Denver? Uh, I spent most of the time explaining what uh, IRL streaming was. And then I had a lot of uh, Reddit clips from IP2. IP2 is a Reddit for IRL live streamers. Um, I took a lot of the clips that basically, sh- you know, her saying I didn't do anything, the clip of me sleeping next to her, um, the clip of saying that her dad was, was you know, was a, uh, raped her at one point in her life and then also showed them discord messages that she had said where she basically admitted that, you know, she was in the wrong. She had a lot of people in her ear. She didn't know what she was doing and that she shouldn't have gone to the police in the first place. And- now, what, what, what bothers a lot of people here, Blade, is that during your live streams and even on, for instance, a soundboard on your website, you refer to rape. Can't, have no, you ever time been out, raped? No, time, time out. Time, time. I, I, have, I have to correct you. Um, back when I first started doing uh, Call right. of Duty videos, I had the website onlysblade.com. I used to like, sell right. t-shirts and I used to list videos. Right. I lost that website and someone else has gained that website. And so I have no affiliation with that website. Got it. Now, I do admit I have a severe drinking problem. Um, I've, had, I've had it for quite some time. It's ruined a lot of relationships. Um, I like... I sometimes black out drunk and say absolutely ridiculous. I'm not a racist, but sometimes I say like the N word or I say something super offensive to women but when I'm say, in that mode. Did, did you say whether you were drunk or not, something to the effect of, have you ever been raped? You should be. Or um, there, something there is to the a, effect of you seem rapable. There, there are clips of me saying that I, I can't deny that. Yes. And what does that say about you, Blade? Uh, it says I have a fucking sick sense of humor and I should probably lay off the fucking booze because I would never say that sober or even tipsy. The police confiscated sheets and clothing from that so-called incident. From the RV, you, yeah. From the RV. Have you heard anything back from investigators involved? Uh, they, they, said, they said it would take a couple of weeks before they would send it back to me. So... And what has Jessica slash Gucci said to you since then? Uh, she hasn't. She deleted all her social media 
and um, the guys got her on a plane back home. And I, I haven't talked to her. Um, I, I don't really think it's appropriate for me to talk to her um, because I feel like she falsely accused me and spread my name wrong. And that friendship is over. <laughs> um, so I, I, I actually haven't talked to her since Colorado. But this is a serious investigation here. Yeah, absolutely. And you still maintain that you had absolutely no inappropriate sexual conduct, groping, or sexual misbehavior with Jessica that night? I did not touch her that night. The only time I've ever touched her is when I hugged her when I first met her in San Francisco. Let's talk about this RV trip for a minute. What is the, what is the purpose of this? Just to go on a road trip and live stream and have people pay to, to view what goes on along the way? Yeah, most majority of IRL streamers live in California, and there's only so many times that we can go on Hollywood Boulevard. There's only so many times that we can go to different parts of L.A. that, that the viewers find it boring. So to get cast members, there's there's four of us. There's Bone, there's Bjorn, and there's myself, and then I got Bam the Driver. To have us as a group collective go to different cities, like when we went to Vegas, we literally walked around Vegas for hours, interact with people, um, see cool stuff, do knife throwing, what, you know, a lot of it's bar content where we go to bars and we drink, get a little intoxicated, talk to people, uh, to see that in different settings and then to be able to watch on a 24 seven cam, us as a group, get into hijinks and stuff like that, the, the viewers really like it. And so we did an RV trip earlier this month. And then once we ended it, we decided to keep the momentum going because the viewers and the community loves it so much that uh, we actually me, Bjorn, and um, Bone actually pulled money together and purchased the RV outright instead of just renting it. So it's ours. We own it. And, and um, who's watching you, Blade? What's the uh, appeal here? The, the appeal is that um, when you're watching, if you're watching a YouTube video, you know that it's going to be interesting, whatever. But when you're watching live a, a, a bunch of characters like myself and everyone else on the RV, um, there's a suspense of I wonder what they're going to get into. I wonder what they're going to do. Um, and so I wonder what kind of hijinks they get into. So obviously with me, unfortunately, I've kind of set my channel up and my career up on getting intoxicated. So people might tune in and go, oh, Blade's sober, boring. Let's wait a little bit until he gets drunk and see what he, he does or how he interacts with Bjorn or how they interact with people, or stuff they say. Let's talk for a minute about this stream where you look like you've been drinking oh, you're holding a dog okay at some point you toss this dog correct and it looks like in the video it's it's a pretty aggressive toss it it's it, 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 it looks like you're abusing that animal well, yes why would you do that to an innocent dog and, and again i'll preface this by saying i'm a dog lover um, okay. I understand roughhousing with an animal, but this was more than that based upon my um, viewing of the video a that... number of times. You, you threw this dog across the room, and obviously when you do that to a dog, you're going to ignite a storm of, of, course, of backlash of course. there. I mean, um, it's, it's I for have... good reason. It's, it's animal abuse. I have absolutely zero um, excuse for that. Yeah, Chris Hansen, listen, right? The dog thing... Blade was a little bit too intoxicated to stop bringing that up to make a guy sound nasty. Blade is actually a great guy, okay? To sometimes he gets a little bit too intoxicated, just like myself. And I have lost many, many friends because I get too intoxicated. Okay, it's as simple as that. Now stop trying to make a guy out to be fucking nasty. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chris. For that, that was fucking horrific. There is a Bjorn. I need you to go away, dude. Um, there is, <laughs> there, there is another shot that happened at what's called the IRL house, and there's another shot from a twenty-four-seven cam where you see that the dog goes a couple of feet, doesn't make it right. Um, I got suspended on YouTube. Um, I alienated a lot of people. 
I'm not making any excuses for that. That did happen when I was extremely drunk. I, 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 I tossed the dog away from me. It's horrific. It's bad. And I apologize profusely for that. Um, after that, I took a break from fucking streaming and the internet because I needed to reevaluate my life where if in me being so intoxicated that I would do something like that, that's fucking horrific. And um, a million apologies. I have no excuses for that. What happened to the dog? People are clamoring on the internet that the dog's spine was injured, that the dog maybe even died. No, no, no. There's a, um, I could probably send you the clip. Um, the dog went a couple feet on the carpet and then just scampered off. The, the dog, thank God, was not injured. There's no injuries, no trauma, no no anything from that incident. Again, a million apologies. I, I'm truly embarrassed by that. You're on the RV right now? Is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And where are you located now? Well, I'm actually at a, there's a nice gentleman um, who, that is actually uh, kind of a mechanic type that owns the RV and he's actually been working on the RV all day. We actually stayed the night here. I'm in his kitchen right now. Got it. But the now, RV is 20 feet that way. Now, um, who's Bjorn and why was he uh, shooting his mouth off today and um, uh, um, threatening me, so to speak? Um, do you want I'm to talk not, to Bjorn? Not that frightened. I, I, I don't know that we need to bring him on, but wh wh why does he do something like that? Hello, Chris Hansen. Bjorn, how are you? Talking. Uh, hello, Chris Hansen. Hello, Bjorn. How are you? I'm doing very good. Uh, Bjorn, he wanted to ask you why you were talking a lot of shit to him today. Bjorn, Bjorn oh, you seem to have an issue with me, and all I'm trying to do is uh, do a straight-up fair story here. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but your last name is Hanson? Yes, it is. And, but that that's a Scandinavian name. It's, it's Danish, actually. I assume Bjorn is, too. He's from uh, Denmark. I'm from Denmark. Denmark. Right. So are my so people. I, I, are you fake? Am I fake? No, I have Danish blood. H-A-N-S-E-N. Are you American or yeah. not American? I was born. I was born in here in the United States, but my. Okay, uh, but but your last name is not American. Okay. Um, okay, that's it. For okay. Thank you, Bjorn. Now I think I understand hey. a little bit more about Bjorn. Now, how sorry about he, he's 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 been up all day and he's he's been drinking a lot. And yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. Well, let's go back. Right, th to thank, thank you, Bjorn. Thank you. Let's go back to this notion of of, of drink, drinking to get paid for being on YouTube and streaming. Is that your gig? Is that what you do full time? Is that how you survive? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I started. Come on, Bjorn. Come on. Uh, unfortunately, I started with uh, gaming and then I discovered street Bjorn. I really need you to leave, dude. Bjorn, this isn't funny, dude. Come on. One second. One second, Chris. Sure. All right. We're going to stand by here. Um, we're getting some interesting. I really, I really apologize about that. Okay. Jesus. I'm trying to keep up. We're all trying to keep up with this. I'm so, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Um, I started with streaming on, on, uh, on Twitch, playing video games, and then people like I'm a party. Your people made a suggestion that maybe I should take shots for money. And I'm one of the few streamers that actually like am willing to embarrass myself at this point um, by drinking for donations. And then it's kind of spiraled out of hand over the last couple of years. So now the image of me on the internet is that I'm a drunk asshole. And if and I that, don't drink, that works for you. Uh, it's not working for me anymore. That's for fucking sure. Well, what has this taught you? I mean, again, I don't want to give you a free pass here, but I do want to be fair and let you tell your side of the story. I mean, these are very serious allegations. Uh, Absolutely. If, if uh, prosecuted successfully, you could go to prison. Um, we're talking about other instances where um, live streams show you groping a 17 year old girl. Do I have that right? Yeah, that was um, that was a complete misunderstanding. Um, I didn't well, I grope see the video. You, you grabbed her from behind there. No, I, I, I literally extended my hand to Jasmine and said, are you OK? And she got weirded out by that. I, I didn't grope her. Right. Um, the, the next, like, and she doesn't drink, so there's no, like, oh, I don't know what happened. She, uh, and she's not 17, she was 20 or 19 or 20. And the next day, she came on my stream and said, yeah, 
you literally just touched my side and I, and I freaked out. She didn't know how to handle it. And she went on my stream and admitted that. And then we spent like 10 hours together at Mr. G's house, who's a streamer in Hawaii. So um, that's literally the internet running with that. Like my, like a lot of people in the Ice Poseidon CX community, like calls me grope or grope gang or groper. And there's no change in their, their, their minds. Right. Well, why is it, for instance, a longtime viewer listener asks that uh, the legend, quote unquote, shrill farter had your Streamlabs account banned for misconduct? How do you explain that? Um, the uh, who knows if shrill farter actually did that. Um, I remember a couple months ago, I banned shrill farter because he was being super negative in my chat and said that this is war. Um my Streamlabs, Bjorn Streamlabs, the RV Trip Streamlabs were all falsely attacked. I've never broken terms of service as far as using Streamlabs as a way to make money. Um, and then also Bjorn and Bone, who's a very wholesome streamer. Bjorn, if you don't get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, Bjorn, seriously, dude. Um, their actual PayPals were, were banned as well. And we've had threats from people saying... We're going to ban your PayPal. We're going to ban your Streamlabs. We're going to ban everything that you guys got. Um, and it's just it's just small people from a toxic community that watch the IRL streams. How would you describe this community? And, and you know, look, I, I am on YouTube. I'm on the Internet. I'm on social media daily. Uh, uh, I get that I'm not your typical YouTuber uh, demographically. Uh, people tease me because I – perhaps haven't mastered the media. I do it to promote my other things. Obviously, you know, I was thrust into this somewhat because of To Catch a Predator and Hanson versus Predators. But already just doing it for a matter of months, you know, I've got people making all kinds of claims, you know, trying to set me up on different things. It's it's a kind of a creepy world, I got to tell you. And I've interviewed a lot of creeps in my 37 years as a journalist. I mean, yes, what um, so drives to this thing? Is it, is it just... A look into everybody's badness, darkness? Um, so before I started doing the IRL streams, like I was known for Call of Duty and playing video games and a little right. bit of drinking, um, I did notice that there was a small percentage of people on the internet that are just sad individuals that do anything to take you down. And But I felt like that was such a small percentage. When I teamed up with Ice Poseidon, like when he invited me out to Florida, I believe in summer of last year, uh, it was an influx. Now there were more viewers. I went from a hundred viewers to 4,000 viewers and that, right. that's great. But in all honesty, I wish I could go back to before that because with that many more people, there is a huge army of people that just want to see you get hit by a train. They want to see you end up in the hospital. They, they want to see you hurt. And um, it's not all of them. Majority of them just want to be entertained and watch and see how things unfold between people. But there is a, a, a large army of people that like my phone, like if I if I turn my phone off airplane mode, uh, my number has been leaked. I went to Verizon Wireless and I asked them how they said I had over 9000 non-contact phone calls in the last month from people that just constantly want to bother me. So that's what I have to look forward to by having you on the show. Huh? No, no, I'm not linking your number. No, your no, I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Yeah. You can find anything if they're diligent enough. Right. So let's talk about this Ice Poseidon fellow. I think most of the people watching this tonight understand who he is, a, a, another uh -huh. live streamer, YouTube guy, yeah. um, involved in gaming initially. But now there are allegations swirling around him, and we'll, we'll deal with this in a in a subsequent show where, where he's here to, to talk about his side of the story. But again, there are allegations of inappropriate conduct in this case with underage yeah. uh, YouTubers. How do you put yeah. that? In Hi there, Bud. What's your belief on that? I mean, um, I can't really speak on what ICE is going through. ICE, um, who was living in L.A. and was actually the reason why I moved to L.A. from Missouri – um, to, to be more in this IRL thing. He has tried to distance himself from everyone that he has worked with because of the toxic community, uh, because of the people that are around him that do stupid stuff and like make his brand and his name like that. So he actually moved to Austin, Texas and tried to disassociate himself with pretty much everyone. Um, Ice is trying to get unbanned on Twitch. So he's trying to have like family friendly stuff. 
but Twitch is never going to unban them. I just, so, sorry if you're watching this, ice, it's, it's not going to happen, dude. Um, so I don't know what's going on with him talking. To, I don't do Discord. I don't know what's going on with him talking to underage girls. Um, the whole time I've known him, he's had a, a pretty sweet girlfriend. And but besides that, I don't. I, I can't speak on the allegations against Ice because I don't. I don't know the story. So it appeared today that they took down your Twitter account. Is that true? Uh, my so about a year ago, uh, my Twitter was falsely taken down, and every time I make a new Twitter, they consider it ban evasion, and so uh, they took my Twitter account down probably a week or so ago. And I'm not even trying to get another Twitter back. Um, when you try to email Twitter, all you get is automated responses. Uh, you can't actually talk to anybody there. I would like my original Twitter back. I have like 150,000 followers, but I'm not holding my breath. So I'm not, I don't even use Twitter at this point. And what, uh, what about the drinking thing? You don't seem inebriated now or under the influence. I'm completely sober now. Yeah. What's the future hold for you? Um, well, it's recently, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, so God. since the dog incident, um, some people reached out and they're like, dude, you got to get to the hospital, bro. Like you got to take care of your health. Cause you're either always drunk on stream or you're hung over and hate in life. You need in like, I, I also smoke cigarettes. Um, I don't exercise enough. So we went to the hospital and it was kind of amazing. They actually said that my liver and kidneys were completely fine. Um, but I do have high blood pressure. Um, ever since then, I used to I used to drink a drink, a Jägermeister. That used to be my only alcoholic drink I would drink. And ever since giving that up, I still have a drinking problem. I'm not trying to fucking push that to the side. But try to, you know, do beers or do vodka or do clear liquids and not the dark, heavy stuff that gets me out of my mind, blacked out drunk on the Internet. Um, I'm working on it. Um, I, I still do have a drinky problem. That's that's completely evident. Um, but I don't go through withdrawals. I'm not drinking. Um, I'm trying to be healthier, and I'm trying to figure out what my next move in in life is. Because if I were to continue doing this, where I get absolutely blacked out drunk all the time for for entertainment for like four thousand people, I'll I'll die in a year. So um, definitely have some life stuff I got to deal with. There's also talk in the YouTube community that you broke up a marriage live on YouTube two years ago, seducing a wife of a friend. Is there any yes, yes, yes. Um, Why would you do something like that? Uh, again, not an excuse, but I was extremely intoxicated. The way that that worked out is I'm banned on Twitch and it was New Year's and all my friends in Kansas City are Twitch streamers. So they had a a party with about eight streams going on at the same time upstairs and I wanted to be with my friends so I actually streamed to my YouTube in their basement kind of a sad scene to be like the only person but every time they would come down they'd want to take a shot so I got really drunk really quick and um, the gentleman's wife who which is so fucked up to say he actually proposed to her in front of me uh probably about six months prior uh he was a, he was a super fan of mine um and the girl came down she was drunk she started making passes at me i was drunk and i started kissing and making out with her and then the husband came down and witnessed it um it was just all bad and i attribute that to alcohol of course i would never do anything that sober but again not an excuse that's a shitty thing so I'm never going to say that that some of the things I do when I'm drinking isn't shitty. Uh, I might run out of fucking apologies if I continue that path, though. Have you gotten a lawyer in any of this? A lawyer? No, no. The The police, when I talked to the police and they got all the information and then they were confused on her, her reporting the incident versus when it happened, they actually laughed at the situation. So um, I, even though the situation is, is serious, I don't have a lawyer if... Um, if charges are pressed, obviously I'm going to lawyer up. I'm going to get a lawyer and, and have them deal with everything. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get charged with anything. Hey, Blade, do you want to hang with us and take a few questions from people who might be watching right now? Uh, are they from your your audience? Yeah, from my audience. Sure. 
All right, I'll I'll field them, and you can decide whether you want to answer them or not. But uh, Vincent's okay. keeping a track on, on these things, and, and again, I appreciate you being with us and being so candid, and and uh, you know, taking absolutely. Can, oh, can I can I also say that? Yeah, um, please do. I I was um, I still am. Uh, when you did your shows, I used to um, I used to love watch them, and I personally hate like I have a mother and a sister. If anybody ever touched them, I would probably be in jail for fucking them up. Um, I really appreciate what you did as far as catching sexual predators. I never thought I'd be taking a seat to talk to you about this, but I really you do appreciate are, what you, are, you, what you, you did tonight. the best. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, I should say there's more to come on that, too. We'll be on the field in the next couple of weeks. But but all right, uh, hang with me here for a minute, Blade. And uh, sure. what, what, give us a sample of what some of the people are asking about here uh, tonight. Okay. Right. Hey, Blade, it's Vince. How you doing? Hey, Vince. Nice, nice to hear you again. Same here. Listen, there's a lot of questions coming in, but they're pretty repetitive. So I'm just going to get down to it. Uh, okay. Are you are you afraid or nervous of what the outcome may be if the police come by and say uh, they, they they found evidence of a sexual? Assault? The question being, Blade, are you anxious that uh, this case may turn on you and that you may be prosecuted? Uh, I'm 100. percent I know I'm not going to get prosecuted. Um, I am anxious for them to look at all the evidence in the DNA to just to prove me innocent. Like I, I'm 100 percent innocent. I'm planning from day one. I am not nervous about the police um, doing anything. They obviously they're doing their job. They have to do it, but I'm not nervous at all about it. And what what about uh, the DNA? If there is. DNA and it's found to be yours. Is there an explanation how that would have gotten there? Uh, not on her. Uh, I've never touched her besides a hug. Um, there, there was, when we got to Colorado, there was a time where everyone ventured off and we were having issues with the RV. And I, I admit I'm a male and I pleasured myself solo and no one else around in the privacy of the RV. Um, so there might be some, some like, DNA evidence of that, like on like a blanket or something, but nothing having to do with. Did you tell the police about that? Yes, yes, yes. So that's the only where that's the only way there would be your DNA in the RV or on the the bed. Yeah, but they took they did the little uh, swabs where they get like the four corners of my mouth, um, and they 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 pulled some blood for me. Um, so they get they got my DNA samples that I, I was and you more than consented happy to to you consented that to that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. All right, Vincent Blade. Uh, Frank Thomas wants to know: Did you ask uh, Go Cheese if uh, how it feels to be raped? Did you ask Gucci's Jessica uh, how it feels to be raped? Off of seven grams of mushrooms. I brought up to Go Cheese. I'm re- reiterating the fact because she had admitted that she had been raped by her father. I had asked her, "Was it, you know, was it worth it to be on the internet to just say that you were a rape victim?" And I said that after seven grams of mushrooms when I thought I was out of my mind. That's a fucked up thing to say to somebody, but yes, I did say that. But there is circumstantial evidence here that does not look good for you, Blake. Of course, and, of course. I mean, the DNA. Your own statements, the video, um, you know, your past talk about rape, um, you know, some violence after you've been drinking. Were you drinking that night? Uh, I had a couple drinks at the bar, but when Gucci's was um, kind of being a handful, uh, I, I, I kind of cut myself off because we needed to get her. We needed to get her back to the RV. We needed to get her off the streets because she was going to get a public intoxication. Like she was taking sips of water and spitting on strangers and just talking crazy to people. And um, to be honest with you, uh, my my friends, the fellow guys, when Gucci's was acting really, really, really drunk, not just like drunk, but like intoxicated out of her mind, they looked at me like, dude, this is what we have to deal with with you when you get to that level. So uh, we played babysitter and got her back to the RV and then everything that we've talked about earlier happened. So, you know, I'm, I'm watching the comments as they come across here tonight. I don't know if you can see them as well, but there are a lot of people. And again, we don't know exactly who these people are. They're, they're Mm. hiding behind, you know, anonymity is, is the nature of of this beast, but you know, lock him up, throw away the key. He's guilty. Uh, Back to the RV for the grope. 
I mean, look, look, I get that anybody can say anything and they sometimes say it about me. So I understand that. But, of course, you know, overwhelmingly, people think you're shucking and jiving a little bit here. How do you respond to that? I mean, they, they can think that I know the truth. Um, I've said everything. I willingly went to the police. I gave my DNA from day one. I said exactly what was going on. Gucci's hung out with uh, with me and the rest of the RV group for four days before she decided to go to the police. Um, I don't know how I can stress this enough. I did not touch that girl. That's it. So I know the truth will come out. It always does. I was forthright with the police. I'm sure that if people wanted to take little snippets and make make it look bad, which is what's going on on the Internet, that, yeah, that could look horrible. And my my, my past drunken comments making jokes about rape, all of it looks bad. But I know I didn't do anything. People that know me know I would never do anything like that. And the DNA should, along with everything else, prove my innocence. I'm going to ask you one last question here, and then we'll we'll take a look at some other uh, questions from the audience. But what is the single most important thing you can say in your defense here? Uh, I'm I'm innocent. Like there's there's literally low quality clips that people can maybe misguide or construed or whatever. And then my unfortunate statement of making a rape joke, which is absolutely fucking horrific. Um, I shouldn't, no one should make rape jokes. Like I, I'm a, I'm a jokester. I have a very dark sense of humor, but I'm obviously not going to make rape jokes in the fucking future because like that put me in this position where people could actually question me when I'm just going to sleep in an RV to possibly sexual assault. And I'm not about that. One of the questions coming in is that uh, uh, saying that you rehearsed this interview with someone earlier. Is that true? No. Now, um, I uh, do you know who Keemstar is? Kingstar, yeah. Okay. Um, I am good friends with Keemstar, and uh, I have been since 2012. Uh, he has been trying to get me to stop drinking for years. And um, just kind of distances himself from me because, you know, this is not a good look. But he's always going to be a brother to me. But when he also owns the dog, like I've, I've been to his house before and like petted his dog. And so when the dog toss incident happened, he pretty much disowned me. He was just like, dude, I'm sorry. I've given you a million chances. I can't fuck with you. Sorry for swearing. Sorry, sorry. Um, but uh, he also does the news and he wanted my side of the story. So earlier today. Um, we attempted to do a podcast together. That's probably what they're referring to, but Keem's audio messed up. So I don't know if they can salvage that or not, but I did talk to Keem and another individual about the whole thing. And so if someone is saying that I rehearsed this, uh, they're probably alluding to the fact because other streamers that are in this house, like, like you see how Bjorn jumped into the, to this stream, right? Exactly. Um, probably went in there and filmed me talking to Keemstar on a Skype conversation. So that's probably what they're alluding to. Got it. All right. Uh, Vincent, anything else in the queue there? Yeah. RC wants to know, uh, did you make this song uh, on YouTube called Only Use Me Bleed as a Groper? No, did you I didn't. make a song on YouTube saying or calling called uh, Only Use Me Bleed as a Groper? No. Um, so part of our community is that they make these um they take like current day songs and they remix them and put different lyrics like uh only use me blade is a groper groper is the song that they started making when i was in hawaii and people donate that song and play it all the time um there's uh, you know the old town country road song that was very popular right uh they made this one song uh called only lose me legs um because i got poor circulation in my legs from the heavy alcohol use and so they literally take the same beat in a similar voice and make these memes and these songs. Um, but I, I don't make any songs. I have no musical talent whatsoever. These are just viewers that are poking fun at me and they make these songs that get played all the time. Vincent, anything else? We'll take one more from the audience here. Yeah. It seems like you have an associate named Benjamin possibly. And audience wants to know what he means by, uh, it depends on the girl for the age of consent. There's a, a fellow named Benjamin who apparently is an associate of yours in this community who... I don't know any Benjamins. No so. Benjamin. Talking about no Benjamin. Uh, the age of consent and... No, um, I'm 36 years old. That's not what it I'm, is. I'm 36 years old and I'm not interested in young girls. So that's 
like of all the horrible things that people have said to me, there's nothing they could say where I like go for an underage girl. That's that's horrific and no. So. All right. Anything else you want to say tonight? I, I think I said everything and I uh, appreciate you having me on your show. One more question. What does the catchphrase figure it out? Little bruises mean. <laughs> OK, um, so one of my catchphrases is figure it out. And when I say fi- when I say figure it out, I've been saying that since I was a kid. Pretty much uh, any life situation that gets thrown at you, you like a lot of people fret about it and like cry about it and just go, I don't know what I'm going to do. And my kind of nonchalant approach to it is figure it out. You're either going to it's either going to kill you, like whatever hurdle life throws at you, it's either going to kill you or you could sit down, you could power through it. You might take a loss or whatever, but you can figure out a better outcome to live another day. And um, Little Bruises is a phrase that came from a funnier die skit where um, there was a, a pimp and he had it was a, a mixture between a pimp and the show Hoarders. And in that little skit on Funnier Die um, that had a black eye and he said that she was clumsy. And then they said, you got to get rid of the clumsy whores. And he goes, all right, uh, you got to leave Little Bruises. And I thought that was hilarious. So a lot of times I call people Little Bruises. So when they say figure out Little Bruises, that's what that means. All right. All right, uh, Blade, uh, a.k.a. Brian Rizzo, thanks for being on the show tonight. We appreciate it. Um, we'll uh, keep on top of the story and we'll stay in touch. All right. Thank you, Chris. And thanks, right, Vincent. Please. You're welcome. Have a good night. Bye. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for uh, tuning in tonight. Just a couple of things. Uh, I talked to the uh, T-shirt folks today and the new designs are almost ready. So we'll have those out. Uh, uh, official CH wear on Shopify. Uh, out in the field soon for the next Hanson versus Predators and new content coming along on the website, HansonVersusPredators.com. Um, I appreciate you tuning in. That was an eyeful and an earful on this story. Uh, it was something that people had been asking about all week. And, and again, um, we thought it was a good place to give uh, Laid a, a forum to answer the questions, criticisms, and, and allegations. I, I do wonder sometimes about this world and what, what were this world meaning um, um, YouTube and, and streaming and, you know, why this is so entertaining. I guess it's just a... a uh, an insight into people's lives. I guess it's like watching some of the predator investigations. It's stuff you just don't see anywhere else. So I suppose that's what makes it interesting. We're going to dig around a little more in the ice Poseidon story. And uh, there are a couple other really, really incredible crimes. You know, last week we talked about uh, the case of the young woman who was found dead in the water tank out in uh, LA and um, um, talked about some crowdsourcing for information to try and solve you know, what happened there. And there are a few other cases, one in Nashville that I'm very, very interested in right now. So we'll, uh, we'll get into those uh, in the